just gotta give your eyes a chance to adapt Feels like you've lost it Just give your heart a chance to react It's progress pick day and then we're going sailing But first, coffee progress picks done. I haven't calculated the average yet, but I'm guessing I'm probably still going to be at 157 just based on what I saw this week. I will say that on my my scale tracker, I do see the plateau, my weight at a straight line, but my muscle mass is no longer dangerously low and is now at acceptable, so it is increasing. So it could be possibly muscle mass that is replacing fat. Muscle does weigh the same amount as fat. A pound is a pound. It is denser, so there's a possibility that we will see this in the progress picks, which is why, which is why if you're doing weight loss and weight lifting, progress picks are pretty crucial. Uh, progress picks are good no matter what if you're on a weight loss journey, but it really helps with the muscle mass increase as well. So before I start making breakfast and then we go off to sailing, I found another channel that I want to recommend if you guys are on a weight loss journey. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm Michui. I'm on a weight loss journey. Hi, how are you? Uh, I don't know why Saturdays are becoming a hard thing for me to remember my opening, but I think it's because I'm very busy very quickly in the morning. <laughs> it is currently 8 o'clock and I woke up a little late. So I am currently following, as of a couple days ago, Devrin Bradford. He is currently on day 22. For you guys, it'll be day 23 on his weight loss journey. Oh, maybe I should have told him I was going to shout him out, but oh well. I'm sure it's fine considering his viewership after 22 days is immensely bigger than mine. So it's fine, I'm pretty sure. But I still want to recommend you guys this. At a 23 day mark, he has lost like 15 pounds. I'm doing averages here. And I love his storytelling. I'm going to tell you straight up, he does a daily weight loss journey vlog in a way that I wish I had started out my storytelling and editing. Like he gets different shots. He starts the day out with a goal and ends with did I complete these goals, which is, you know, a beginning, middle, and end, <laughs> which was something I was struggling with on my own storytelling and editing. And he does it masterfully. I really love his personality. I think personality goes a long way when it comes to vlogging, and his is just fun to be around, to watch. Uh, he's also killing it, and he engages with the viewers in a way that I wish I knew how to. Like, it's so naturally done, and I have to remind myself to ask you guys questions because a lot of the time I get in my head about telling you guys stuff, and I forget about the natural communication that should be happening within a community, so he has successfully done that in a very short time. And his editing style, his storytelling is just, like, amazing. So I'm going to link his channel in the description box below, and I do suggest you guys go send him love, go watch his channel, even if I am only sending him like two or three viewers, I still want to shout him out because a good job deserves a shout out. Okay, that being said, uh, I'll tell you straight up, I want that smoothie again, but it doesn't work for today's plan. I do like to plan my meals around the activities for the day. We're going to be out on the boat for hours and hours. I don't think a smoothie is really going to sustain me. I'm going to do an apple cinnamon oatmeal and I really want to get in a lot of protein to sustain me. So I'm going to do some shrimp with some Cajun seasoning and call that good. Ooh, with some bean sprouts and maybe a little bit of sweet and sour sauce. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, the pairing doesn't sound amazing, but I eat them separately. So it doesn't, it doesn't mix up the flavoring too bad. I'll get cooking, show you the end result, and then I'll meet you at the boat. Anyone else? get a sense of relief when they see their boat still there sitting perfectly on the water. I don't know why, but until I see it, I get a little nervous. I think I'll leave the keys in the lock this time to prevent any mishappenings again. <laughs> Okay. 
clear. That was gorgeous, baby. I didn't get my line stuck and you got the perfect turn. brushing his teeth on court. I thought he was trying to imitate sucking dick. <laughs> I was like really offended for a second. I think that is the guest car, so I think those guys are cute. It's because he was staring right at us doing it. Waves ahead. out here in the water and get experience. We're not thrill seeking, we're trying to get comfortable. Jib is staying down for a hot minute because it is a little rocky and wavy. And last time we were out in something like this, the gusts were just hitting us so hard that we couldn't control it due to lack of experience. We got the power on, we're into the winds. We're gonna shift out of the winds and turn off the power and rely on the main sail. With this wind, I wanna be on a, a broader reach. Okay. So close reach. main just a little bit. The more that you reach, the more your main goes out. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's almost a perfect close reach right there, huh? And we're at two point knots. And on a close hold, we were going eight knots with a higher... Point eight. Point eight knots with a higher degree on a tilt. So we're, got, we're shooting for close reach here. It does put us kind of at a wave disadvantage, like it's hitting us from the side, whereas before we would be hitting it more straight on. That's fine. As long as the boat feels controllable, I'm good. And this feels controllable. On today's what, curriculum yeah. schedule, on today's schedule, we're just gonna be tacking and playing with the wind. I got a little comfortable. Ready to tack? Let's go. So you shouldn't have to do anything with this other than have to help it come, come across. Right, okay. Alright? Right. Alright, ready? Ready. Across. We're on a close hold, let's go on a close reach. Uh, let's turn it, how much she's turning right now. There she is, I like that. We're just trying to slowly progress into comfort. I think that that's one of the things that we've been screwing up on is that we're just like, yeah, let's let's fucking balls to the wall and do this. And uh, we, Stephen might feel uncomfortable and being willing to go through it because it's not that uncomfortable for him. But for me, it's like a panic mode, life and death situation. It, it, it just triggers a, a freeze response in me. I, I am appreciative that Stephen is willing to work with me on how, how much terror it instills in me and that I'm trying to get over it. So I appreciate that he, he's working with me on it. As long as I'm working on myself at the same time, which I am, right? Yes. Okay. The waves are going like this right now. It's, it's a little interesting. All right, we're gonna play with tacking again, which means that we wanna get on a close haul because you wanna do your tacks from close haul to close haul as small as possible. You don't want it to be this big thing. So we're gonna get on a close haul. We're gonna tack over onto a starboard port or a starboard tack, right? Yes. 
So bringing her in to close halt. Or more. Probably more. Alright. Ready to tack? Ready. Tack ho. Tack away. Tack away, sorry, it's heave heave ho, uh, right? Uh, jibe ho. Jibe ho, yeah. It's okay. Working through. Alright, we are on a close haul. We're gonna start bringing it into a beam reach. Ready? See, it did give us more speed. This this is why it's important to play with. But, but, but beam reach, the beam reach, we're just going back and forth in place. That's fine. We're playing okay. with wind. Sure. I'm just for general for general knowledge. For general knowledge, beam reach and beam reach will get you in the same spot. We're not trying to go anywhere. We're trying to play with wind. Um, so when we went from close haul to close haul, our did speed our speed did decrease by quite a bit because we don't have the jib up. By quite a bit because we don't have the jib up. That is fine. We will do that later when we feel more comfortable. Heading up into a beam reach increased our speed. It went from one point one one knot up to two point three. So playing with the wind. We don't look at the speed, we look at our reach. Are you guys ready to see a shit show? I'm about to um, be in control of this tack. <laughs> Alright, so mine. My tiller? Yeah, your main sheet. Uh, okay, bring us in. We're gonna go close hauled. We are close hauled. Okay, don't let it out yet. Let it, let it go ahead and back. I'm just getting ready. Okay, ready to tack? Ready. Hard to beat. Right there. Damn, Tiller doesn't want to not hit you. <laughs> Alright, we went close haul to close haul. Good job. Ready? Um, we're gonna go close we're gonna go uh, beam no, we're let's go close reach. We've been doing really good on close reach. Close reach? We are reaching close. Good job, pet. And I get a high five. And um, we were going three knots. We're going three knots. The only thing is, is that um, <laughs> Stephen and I need to move forward a little bit when we're doing this, so we're not hitting each other with that's the why, tiller. That's why I, I keep it up part of it. Yeah, I can see that. I'm going to do closing thoughts now. We're on our way back. It is 1.20. Oh, my nose itches. Uh, originally, I was planning on being out here until 5, but when you're actively sailing, it is a lot more work than if you're just sitting on a boat, enjoying the sunshine, letting the water take you wherever. Like normally, if it's too much, we don't go out. And if it's something that I feel comfortable in, we're usually just sitting on dead water and wind. So <laughs> this is the first time that I have experienced active sailing, like doing it all for a few hours. And, and it is a bit tiring, it is, which is good. A tired mind is a happy mind, sometimes. I don't know, what, uh, that's not true, is it? A tired mind is not a happy mind. Um, it's good that I am physically exhausted because that means I'm probably gonna get a good night's sleep. <laughs> but I wanted to share my closing thoughts before showing you my dinner. Um, and possibly us trying to catch catch the slip because that's always interesting. I'm feeling really good. This is this was a huge win for me. I I, I played around I played around with the wind. We practiced hacking. Uh, we started slow, built up that confidence, and said, Yeah, I can handle a little bit more. 
and it, it, it seems to have worked. I do think that there will be times where it's too much for me, but I think we've got a good game plan and system right now in play, and we're gonna continue, which, which makes me really hopeful for the future. I was feeling a little defeated every time that I failed, worried that maybe living on a sailboat wasn't a feasible future for me, but I'm starting to think it is, and that just puts me in really good spirits, and I think, even though I'm still on a plateau, um, which I'm pretty sure I am, although I could also be building muscle and losing weight at the same time, it's a little tricky on that, but even though I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with the assumption that I'm still in a plateau, and my goal was was to get over the plateau for Vlogmas in July, but also to work on myself. And I think I can happily say Vlogmas in July is going to end in four days, and I have accomplished all that I could hope for and more during this month. Thank you for spending a whole month with me. And if you haven't, that's fine. You can go back and watch all my old videos. It's free. But for these final four days, I said let's just have some fun. Let's go do some crazy shit, man. And I guess with that, you guys will have to see what I have in store for tomorrow. Bye!